Hey folks, my name is Dave. Welcome to our shop here at NTD Racing. This is a video I'm kind of regurgitating. I've done this one before, but I find that a lot of people will ask to see how I basically remove mill scale from metal I've been working on. And I keep telling them, hey, go to this video and look at minute 13 or something like that. So this time I'm just gonna make it its own individual video, all the stuff that you need to know. So this is gonna show you exactly how I do it, the products that I use. And if you look at my description below or go to our website at ntdracing.com and click on the, the store for our Amazon store, I'm gonna put all the products there except for the vinegar. You just gotta to go to your local store to get that kind of stuff. But here you go. I'm gonna show you how I do it, removing mill scale from the parts that we cut off the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR. Let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so what is mill scale? So whenever they take hot metal and they form it into sheets, that process creates something called mill scale. It is a layer of iron oxide that's on the metal. And if you're going to weld something that's gonna be a high quality weld and you're in a TIG weld, you want bright, shiny metal, so you need to get that off. Now, sometimes if I MIG weld, I'm not as concerned about the quality of the weld, I might not remove all the mill scale. But if I'm gonna TIG weld, I go right down to bright, shiny metal, and this is how I do it. All right, let's talk about mill scale removal and how I do that. So I got all the parts here and they just got a whole bunch of mill scale on it. If you haven't tried to remove this stuff before, it is really difficult. Um, you could use flap discs forever and not get all that stuff off. So this is a really easy way to do it. And I've shown it in the video before, is what I use is just what I get here from, I think I got this from Target, just distilled white vinegar, gallon cans. I have 10 of them here. They're like 250 uh, per gallon. So uh, even in California prices, they're pretty, pretty reasonable and then I have two uh, basically tubs that I uh, mix all this stuff in uh, or put all this stuff in and this is just a, the small tub that I use and I'll use it for these smaller parts and then I made this really big tub right here actually my brother Mark made it super awesome dude uh, made this really long tub when I make stuff like the uh, the trailing arms and the really long pieces but since I don't want to use that much vinegar I'm gonna use the smaller tub today and all I do is I just start taking all the parts and I place them in here and I just try to make sure as I put the parts in here that they don't overlap such that the, the vinegar is able to react with the surface of the parts as best as they can. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of parts here today, so there's going to be some overlap. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and flip them over and around while they're in here soaking in all the parts. And I might just put some of these parts in here to kind of space space them off so that they're, they're kind of like tilted in there. You can kind of see the vinegar get all around all of those parts. Anyway. We'll go ahead and put those in there and then add in some vinegar. All right, that only took about two gallons of vinegar and everything is submerged. And what I'll do is I'll let it sit here for about three hours. I'll come back out, I'll flip it, kind of agitate the vinegar and make sure it's touching all of the parts. And then about six hours later, we'll be able to get all that mill scale off and I'll show you exactly how we do that. All right, here is a look at my larger vinegar bath. And this is to illustrate to you that it doesn't have to be too complicated when you make something like this. Some scrap wood, I think we went and bought this, I think they call it OSB or whatever. Uh, one sheet and just some other scrap wood to put this thing together. But as I open it up here, you can see we're just using some plastic liner that you would use if you were painting like a floor or something like that. It's pretty thick stuff. I think it comes like in a 30 by 40 foot sheet or something like that, maybe seven mils, but that holds all the vinegar in there. I don't think we've ever replaced it, but you could if you had to, and we just kind of staple it over here to the sides. It is important to put a lid on this because I will use the same vinegar for months. So I'll put vinegar in here and then use it maybe through a whole bunch of builds. And by having one tub this big, it allows me to make six foot long trailing arms for our desert trucks. And I use a smaller one uh, over here just because I don't want to use the volume of vinegar all the time that I would use in this. So I will fill this up once we start making trailing arms again. So usually at about three hours in, what I'll do is I will come back to check on how things are going and I won't necessarily necessarily flip them all over, but I will do is just kind of agitate them and move them around a little bit, just to make sure that the vinegar is kind of getting on all sides of the things. And you can kind of see, like for this one, how much the mill scale is just falling off of it. And that's the way it'll be. And uh, you flip those over, but anyway, just want to make sure that the vinegar is touching all of the surfaces as best as you can get it. That should be pretty good. We'll come back again. This is about three hours in. We'll come back again. Maybe about you know another three hours. At about six hours, it should be good to go and ready just to kind of brush all that stuff off. 
So the vinegar that I'm using in this is the first time using it and it's actually pretty clean. You can see it almost looks like fresh clean water. But the more that you use that, the longer it lasts. And I literally will have used vinegar that I'll use for months. Uh, it'll turn this soupy kind of brown color, but it'll still work. It'll still get rid of the mill scale. And uh, w make sure you put on some gloves because that will actually discolor your fingers. My fingers will look like a, a reddish brown or something like that, which I'm sure is bad for you. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't recommend. But just make sure you protect your hands and put some gloves on. After that, I take it over to my sink. And this has got to be a sink that you're willing to get just destroyed. You can see the brownish color on there um, that you can't get off. So whatever you're washing in it is done for. Um, and I'm just using a stainless steel brush to get the mill scale off. And if you can see, I mean, it basically takes it down pretty much to bare metal just with that stainless uh, steel brush the first try with it. Um, but th then to get it to that next level where, you know, you're going to be TIG welding, uh, there's two more processes I do. And uh, you'll see here, I'm going to pull out what's called a bristle brush. And a bristle brush is made by 3M. If you check my description below or if you go to our webpage at ntdracing.com, and you click on our store, our Amazon store, you'll find a link there for the bristle brush. The bristle brush does an amazing job of taking off and right down to a shiny finish. Now I'm really careful because these things are expensive, uh, but they last a long time. I think as long as you do a couple things. One thing I do is I use my battery operated angle grinder because it turns a little bit slower and doesn't tend to heat the bristle brush up so much because it's a plastic part. And two is I always try to make sure that the bristles, as they're hitting the piece, they're running off of the piece and not striking a sharp edge to kind of cut those bristles down. And they last a long time, as long as you do that. I'm really not pressing too hard on the piece. This is a light, light amount of pressure. And you can see I've been using that a long time and that bristle brush still looks pretty good because I'm doing those things that try to extend the longevity of it and it works awesome. Uh, another thing I will do is I just use a random orbital sander. I think I have 150 grit paper on the sander right now and that's just to take some of the mill scale off the smaller parts because you know, if you try to hit those things with an angle grinder sometimes they become projectiles so just remember when you're using those high speed tools safety first gloves glasses all those things to make sure if something becomes a projectile it can't hurt you so here are the results i think they look fantastic it's just about ready to weld i will hit them with acetone and a paper towel before i do weld them just to make sure i get all of the oils off of the metal besides that they're pretty good and another advantage of using the acetone is that now it is still dimensionally the same. If you hit that thing with a flap disc to get the, the uh, mill scale off, you take away some of the material. And when you're using the vinegar, none of the material comes off. It's still there. And dimensionally, it's still the same, especially if you're having something that you have optimized as an engineer or something like that. So I think it looks pretty good. Really happy with the way that went together. Uh, this part right here is a spindle for our budget trophy truck we're building. And if you want to follow along on that, I have a playlist for that on our YouTube channel. If you're wondering about how to get one of the Langmuir Systems Crossfires XRs for yourself, well, here you go. So how do you go about ordering one of these tables? Go to our website, ntdracing.com and click on Fab Shop. From Fab Shop, scroll down, you'll see a bunch of the videos that I make with the Langmuir Systems Crossfire Pro and Crossfire XR. And then down here, you see save $100 with code NTDRACING. Now that will take you to the Langmere Systems page, but also my affiliate end of the page. Uh, so once you click on one of the products and then go and add it into your cart, you'll, what you'll see is that the discount is already added onto your order. And here is the discount right here, NTD Racing, $100. But let's say you were just at the, the Langmere Systems webpage and you went to order it and there was no discount in there. Then just in this box right here, you would put in NTD Racing, and then you would say apply and you'll see you'll get $100 off on your order of the Pro. And later on, I think in, in the short term, it'll be also on the XR. You can try it. I'm not sure if it'll work. I tell you what, if I hadn't seen it myself, I wouldn't have believed how the mill scale just basically, literally when you pull it out of the vinegar, it just basically runs off the sheet. And then that wire brush gets most of it off. And then I use that bristle brush just to turn it to a mirror shine. It just works amazing. I can't. I couldn't believe how well that worked after going for hours with you know some kind of an angle grinder with a flap disc or something like that. Anyways, I try to do a lot of these videos. I have a couple of videos which I call my one-stop shop. Whether you're looking to work on a 6L90, an L96 uh, engine, or, or a few different things I do, where I just try to give you all the resources that you would need by watching the video, looking the description, you get all the stuff that you you'd want. Hopefully, that makes it easier on some of the guys that are out there trying to do it themselves. 
please consider checking out our channel. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on here, whether we're building uh, parts for our race truck, we're building parts for our chase trucks, our recovery team, you name it. I hope you'll consider hitting that like and subscribe, ringing the bell for notification of future episodes. If there's something else that you see me doing that you want more specifics on, please go ahead and put that in the comments and I'll try to add that to a future video. I'll see you next week. Take care of yourself.